What's up, divas? What's up, divos? It's your girl, April. And you know how we do. So anyway, this video is, of course, about real talk because it's Wednesday. And I'm about to just bless y'all with me doing my makeup while I'm talking to you guys. Yes, honeys, I did say that because, listen, I'm trying to kill some time. Knock it all out in two things because I got some things to do today so I figured I would go ahead and put my makeup on while I did this real talk but before we even get into that I got to say a special thank you and shout out to two lovely people in the whole wide world subscribers M. Harris. So you guys know me real well, like some of y'all do, some of y'all don't. And when I say some of y'all don't, because if you know me real well, bitch, you will never come for me. Okay. All right. You will not say no dumb shit on my videos. You just will not come for me and mine. That's when I know you know me real well. But if you know me really, really, really well, then you know <sighs> what the fuck I like. So in my post office box, I did get some of my favorite things in the world because I am one of the big Wonder Woman fans, okay? I loved Wonder Woman as a kid growing up. You know, wearing them under rules, running around the house. Bam! These ain't under rules. But I'm saying, though, did one of my divas just package me up some of these now first of all i haven't had no wonder woman underwear since wonder woman under days so when i seen these i was like whoo honey child i'm about to put those on but then i thought about it like at least show them before you put them on so after today i'm wearing them things so thank you diva because i'm loving them and they just the right size for all of this voluptuousness Okay. So did she send me? Okay, I'm like so excited because I'm about to do my makeup. But okay, did she send me? Yes, Wonder Woman lipstick. Okay, such a pretty red. Okay, and such a beautiful packaging. I love it. I absolutely love this. I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna put it in my showcase, my glass showcase. That would be so crazy if I hung the panties up in there, but I'm going to wear the panties. But this, I'm going to actually put in my showcase with all my other Wonder Woman stuff. So thank you so much, honey. I love you. And thank you also for the charm, which is so cute. It's going to go up in there too in my little showcase. So thank you, Diva. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Did she send me a card? Ta-da! Wonder Woman sticker. You guys know I love everything Wonder Woman. Thank you so much, Misha. It was so much appreciated. I love getting surprises. So also in my P.O. box, if you guys watched my Dollar Tree haul with Mumsy the other day, you did see that I did, um, I was talking about another YouTuber who is my favorite, favorite, favorite YouTuber which is my boy Rich Lux. If you guys don't know who I'm talking about, my honey, he has his paper fan. He just be like, not bother, okay? Not bother, honey. I love him so much. I love him so. Yes, if you guys don't know who Rich Lux is, y'all been sleeping under a rock because he's like one of the funniest YouTube gossipers ever. And I don't really watch that YouTube gossip so much. I just don't care about it. But watching Rich Lux makes you not feel bad about watching gossip or listening to gossip and listening to other people talk about other people. You ever have that feeling like, um, I just don't want to listen to it or, oh, I don't want to talk about nobody because I feel like I'm better than somebody and I just don't do that, that type of shade that you be throwing at people and you know what, goddamn well, you talking about somebody because everybody talk about somebody. Shit, bitches, I'm about to talk about all y'all motherfuckers when I get off of here. I'm just saying. And today's breakfast is the meal replacement shake, which is sponsored by Equate Brand, which is the Walmart. Yes. It ain't really sponsored. A bitch bought this shit. Because if somebody going to sponsor my videos, I would surely hope it wasn't the Equate Brand. But then again, who gives a fuck? Because it's Walmart and they making millions of dollars. So I'm saying. But I do love these. These are a great meal replacement. And if y'all bitches ain't seen my Instagram post with me and my Walmart outfit on. Okay. Did I just say Walmart was sponsoring this? But I was just joking. But I did have on a Walmart outfit. A bitch had on some leggings and a tank top. And she was looking pretty damn slim down. Okay. Thanks to the meal replacements the three mile walks and of course one of my favorite fucking pills and loose weight lost weight in the world is hydroxy cut i know y'all bitches be like oh don't take those oh don't take those but you know what because i have read that on my last post or whatever i showed them in a the video and 
Some people was like, ooh, don't take those. Some don't take those. You know, I care about you, diva. Bitch, I care about me fucking too. Don't think you the only motherfuckers out there that, don't, that care about a bitch because I care about me too. But here's the thing. I appreciate the input and everything is for each person to, you know, your opinions are very highly sometimes appreciated. When I say sometimes, I mean that some people's opinions just be like, listen, bitch, you could have left that fucking thoughts in your motherfucking head and didn't say shit because I didn't really want to hear that shit. You think I really give a fuck about how you feel? You know, some of those opinions that we really don't give a fuck about, but that's why I say that. But I do um, value your opinions when it comes to caring about moi. But, you know, to each is all. Some people take some things that work for them. Some people take some things that work for them. This works for me. It doesn't give me any type of problems. You know, I do go to the doctors regularly. I walk. And it just gives me energy and helps burn my metabolism fast. So why wouldn't I want my metabolism to burn fast? You know what I'm saying? Because I want to burn all this fat, bitches. Okay? Yes, honeys. Yes. So, we about to get into this real talk. Okay? I'm going to tell you something a little bit of TMI. This shit will make you have, like, a gas, okay? I don't know about the rest of y'all who drink milk products, but this right here really fucks with my stomach sometimes. And it only seems like it messes with my stomach when I'm out in public somewhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, I don't want to pass gas around my friend. But then you have to think about it. The key word is my friend. If she was really a friend, she wouldn't care if I passed gas around her. But, you know, some things are just left best to the imagination. You know, you want to be cute. You don't want everybody to know you're a little gassy. But sometimes a bitch don't give a fuck. Well, the other day, that shit made me so gassy. And I was like, oh, I could have just stayed home for this. Why, 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 why? So anyway, listen, on to the next. So I know y'all like, bitch, when is you going to tweeze those motherfucking brows? I was trying to find somewhere, and I did find this one place that threads your eyebrows. But here's my thing. I ain't really into fucking sitting in the middle of the fucking mall in a kiosk getting my brows threaded. I just, I don't know. I, there's something about that that just bothers me. I just really need some privacy. And let me tell y'all, we was at the motherfucking mall on Saturday, me and my best friend, and we seen the, um, we was at the Mexican mall. We did, we, we walked by the microblading or whatever you call that thread in place, okay? I said the microblading. The thread in place. Like I said, they in the middle of the fucking mall, right there in the kiosk. So... You know, they must have been busy because this black girl was sitting there with her boyfriend um, waiting. And her wig looked all right. It could have used a little brushing, but it looked all right. Yes, bitch, I said a wig because I know it was a motherfucking wig. Okay, but here's the thing. I had to give her the motherfucking side eye because, bitch, why is you looking at me like that? Ain't nobody over here for your motherfucking man. Or did you not like my Walmart legging outfit? Like, was it that? Because I was looking mighty cute with my cheap outfit on, my cheap makeup, and my cheap ass synthetic wig that I had to carry around a brush with and brush that motherfucker because it kept getting tangled. I'm talking about this one right here. This fucking It's a Wig Swiss Lace Lancy bullshit. I, I really do like it because it's so pretty, but oh my God. That motherfucker will tangle up on you like nobody's business. Was she looking at my wig? What? No, because I had just brushed it out prior to seeing this bitch. But I was like, damn, I looked at her. Well, what the fuck is you looking at? Like, she wasn't looking at me like she knew me. She was looking at me like I wanted her motherfucking man. You know those type of bitches that always think somebody want their man or the next bitch want their man? Like, bitch, don't nobody want him. You don't even motherfucking want his ass. What the fuck make you think I want him? I hate bitches that get like that. Like, sweetheart, please, if you can take him, then motherfucking have him. You can have the fucking troubles because um, I'm trying to get rid of his fucking ass. But so that's the kind of look the bitch was giving me. Like, I was trying to steal her man. When, bitch, I wasn't even thinking about him. I was thinking about why the fuck was you looking at me like that. So you know how bitches do the side eye. I don't really be into that side eye bullshit because I'm the type of person. I just look at you straight dead on. Like, can I help you with something today? What you need? Some motherfucking Kellogg's up in your life? Because you know how we do, okay? So anyway, yeah, like, I don't want to make this about her, but bitches, stop staring at other bitches when you with your man, okay? Don't nobody want your motherfucking nigga. 
Bitch, I'm pretty sure you don't want his ass neither. But anyway, so I wanted to see how much it was to get my eyebrows threaded. And unfortunately, there was no fucking sign or price list to, you know, to look and see. So I should have asked that bitch that was staring at me so hard, like, how much is this shit? Because you looking like, you know, you work here, bitch, you sitting on the fucking sideline. Either you getting your brows done or you looking at my flip-flops. Which one is it? Okay, which one is it? So, uh, yeah, I didn't end up getting my brows done, obviously, because they still look a hot-ass mess. But, yeah, one of these days, very, very soon, I shall. Because I'm going to tell you what, I'm really tired of fucking using all of this freaking foundation to conceal them. This is what I have to do. I have to use some of my foundation, which is the Becca shit, because it's a little bit thicker. And, um, you know, thin them shits the fuck out. Make them look non-visible to a motherfucker. The trials and tribulations. Don't y'all hate when you... Oh, my God. Like, don't y'all fucking hate when bitches stare? Like, I be trying to figure it out. With females, I don't know. Is it just me? But I think females be trying to, like, validate themselves a lot. Like... You know what I'm saying? Make themselves seem relevant to the world. Validate who the fuck they are or just give you the fucking stare down. You know, like back in the Westerns when the motherfuckers would be on one side of the road and then you have the other motherfucker on the other side of the road. They got their guns and their holsters and they staring you down. They looking at you. That's how bitches be, but they don't be no guns involved. It just be the hands and the mouth running, but they giving you the stare down to lead up into that shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, bitch, I don't have time for this. I'm gonna be like that old motherfucking Western movie, and I'm gonna just pop off on your ass real quick. Pop you. Pop pow! Because you know out here in Arizona, guns are legal. I'm not saying going around shooting motherfuckers is legal, but you know. Other than that, yes, honeys, let me tell y'all something. I have finally come to realize that there are a lot of trolling ass bitches in the world. You don't even have to be a trolling ass bitch on YouTube. You can just be a trolling ass bitch in the world. And with that being said, I would like to tell you motherfuckers that I love you all. Because even a troll needs some love. You know those type of people that troll your videos and always want to talk shit or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Talk shit in life, run her motherfucking mouth, never shut the fuck up, talk shit about people, watch your videos, pass it around to talk about your motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. There's a lot of motherfucking trolls. And with that being said, there is one motherfucking troll that I'm about to address. Now, see, this is the part that um, I don't understand. See, my girl, Shay, she be saying all the time, these bitches be fake on YouTube. And I be so agreeing with her. Like, be, bitches be real fucking fake. You know what I'm saying? And this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about motherfucking trolls. These troll ass bitches be so fake. Why are you going to go up on my motherfucking video, bitch? And then text my girl Shay talking shit about me like, um, what the fuck? Now, bitch, I don't, she, Shay, Shay will not tell me who the fuck texted her this text message. Like, this is a real motherfucking text. She didn't even tell me who texted her this shit. But I'm pretty sure bitches or bitch, you watching. You watching me. You have to be watching me because... If you wasn't watching me, then how the fuck would you notice? So did Shay screenshot a text message from some bitch on YouTube that be watching me? And I think she's a YouTuber too. But bitch, if you notice know text messages from you, then I'm going to need you to comment down below so I can figure out who the fuck you are. Because if you're watching this video, then you know who the fuck you are. So if you're watching this motherfucking video, ho, video ho, then motherfucking comment below. Yes, April, it was me that texted your friend, okay? Did this bitch be, um, text my friend about me talking about, hello, I see your girlfriend is asking people for help to get her teeth fixed, shaking my head with a GoFundMe account. One of her followers set up for her. So my girl was like, why are you telling me stuff I already fucking know? First of all, I'm going to say this, bitch. 
whoever wrote the motherfucking text message or texted my friend about my motherfucking teeth and about my motherfucking business, bitch, go sit the fuck down under a rock because where the fuck you been at, okay? First of all, a YouTube follower did fucking make the account for me, which I had her delete. Now, bitch, I got my own motherfucking account. If you really was getting the tea right, get that shit the fuck right. And, bitch, what you so worried about my motherfucking teeth getting fixed or what anybody is giving me? You don't know what the fucking world I live in. You don't know anything about me. But here's the thing about bitches, okay? This is why I be saying to y'all, bitches are so motherfucking petty. And it's so fucked up because I wish my girl would give me the info on who texted her that shit. But I kind of, I, I keep trying to think to myself, I remember her telling me one time that this other girl be watching on YouTube. She's a YouTuber and she be texting her sometimes. I cannot remember for the life of me. But guess what, bitch? I'm going to remember sooner or later because all I got to do... Let's go back to like old, old text messages. And then I'm going to find out who the fuck you are. And then what I'm going to do? I'm going to troll your motherfucking videos, bitch. And I'm going to talk shit about you on your own motherfucking shit. This the shit that I don't get. If you really motherfucking know me so well, then you know how we do. And bitch, if you know me so well, then you wouldn't even talk shit about me. This is the shit I be talking about. Fake ass bitches. Because how you know anything about my motherfucking Go fund me account if you weren't following me on some type of social media platform. This is when I be talking about the fake ass bitches, y'all. Fake ass bitches. So I know y'all see me still sitting here trying to cover up these fucking thick ass eyebrows. But you know what? They mine. And of course I did draw some of them on. I had to make them look uniformed and nice. You know what I'm saying? I had to, like, I, I, I can't go outside looking like I'm all jacked the fuck up, all right? Though there are days when I would like to. And I'm going to tell y'all something. I did not mean for them to come out this thick today. I did not want my eyebrows to be this motherfucking wide, rather. Oh, so yeah, motherfucking trolls. I, I'm just, like, waiting, like, you know what's so crazy? I don't ever have no YouTube drama with some with people because you know why? I keep to my motherfucking self. I mind my business. And I think it has a lot to do with I'm always so worried about what people think about me and I don't want nobody to dislike me or stop following me. So I'm just going to be a nice person. I'm Basically, I'm going to be fucking Sarah, okay? Y'all know I be talking about sometimes I be Sarah. In the, in the world. When I say in the world, I'm talking about in the corporate world. I got to be motherfucking Sarah. Because I can't be motherfucking April all the time. Because if I'm April all the motherfucking time, motherfuckers would run for the hills. Like, seriously, y'all bitches would be like, oh, I can't. Um, no, no. That bitch is no. She's mm -mm. no, ma'am. I'm not fucking with her. She's crazy. She's a weirdo. She's mean. Uh, she's ratchet. She's ghetto. No, thank you. No, thank you. So, you know, sometimes I got to be motherfucking Sarah just to get my point across and be accepted into the world. But then I have come to think about things in life in general. Bitches, I'm 42, about to be 43 years old in June. Do you really give, think that I give a fuck about what any of y'all motherfuckers think about me? No, ma'am. Not today. I don't really give a fuck. I'm um, like Rich Lux would say. Not bothered, okay? Not bothered by the shit at all. So, yeah, you trolls and shit, go ahead and continue to write about me. Bitch, next time is what I'm saying to the bitch that's watching this, and you know who the fuck you are because you texted the message. Next time, bitch, why don't you just send me a message about the shit? Don't go to somebody else. Go to me about the shit. And, t and, and message me about my fucking account. And message me about what the fuck I got going on. Message me. Don't go to my friend and think that she's not going to tell me. You know what I'm saying? And this is the funny thing. The reason why she's not telling me the person's name is because she know how the fuck I get. And she's protecting your punk ass. Your motherfucking punk ass. So, yeah. Why don't you not be a punk and say who the fuck you are? Like, comment below, bitch. Like, it was me. I said it, bitch, about your motherfucking teeth. I said it, okay? Bitch, it was me. How about you just send me an email? Better yet, send me a motherfucking email and say, yeah, bitch, it was me. If you don't want the world to publicly know that you a fucking punk, bitch. Okay? 
Because if you was a real motherfucker, you would just left a comment on either the video or how about this? Or on the Facebook page. Because either way, you following, bitch. So why don't you? And why is you following? This is the shit that I be trying to understand. Why do bitches follow you and then talk shit about you? I'm really trying to figure that shit the fuck out. So anyway, yes, this is not going to be no motherfucking makeup tutorial. So if y'all think, y'all bitches think y'all going to learn something today, y'all ain't going to learn a motherfucking thing today. Because listen, um, it's not a makeup tutorial. I know somebody's going to be like, oh, your bra strap is showing. But bitch, yes, it's all the fuck out, okay? Because bitches always got to be so petty and point out fucking things. There was one video I had where the girl was like, your dresser's open in the back and it's bothering me. So now I got both the motherfucking drawers open. Not on purpose, just because I forgot to close it. And it may bother me too, but why the fuck does it bother you so motherfucking much? If you need a video about anything that you got to get off your motherfucking chest, whether it be about your family, your friends, your fake ass friends, life in general, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers at g Muffin is my lover 2012 at gmail.com. So let's get into this. Hey, April, I love your channel and how you can keep it real. I have a family problem. Please help. I already changed the names. You can call me Ashley, my cousin Tia. Okay, you can call me Ashley. My cousin Tia and I have been best friends since I can remember. We do everything together. When when there was her, there was me. Well, anyway, her mom and her family were getting evicted. So I let them travel to me. All moved in, all seven of them, with her child's father. They they kept my house so dirty, and I wouldn't wait, and I couldn't wait for them to get on their feet. When they did, I was so happy. So everything was good when they moved out for like four months. Then they started not paying their bills, and they got evicted yet again. So they decided to move back to our hometown. My best friend stayed and moved back in with me. And my ex. When me and my ex decided to go our different ways, I told her we can stay living together and you can help pay some of the bills. And her best friend is Tia, remember? She told me she didn't want to work and she was just going to move back home. Fast forward to now, they all moved back to where I stay. They got their own place, but now they are getting evicted yet again. I told her before she came back I was trying to get Ashley together, meaning me. Think about myself. I went through a bad breakup and always took care of people and family. And now this was the time for me. She agreed and said, okay, but now they are getting evicted. Now they are mad at me because I didn't offer them a place to stay. Like, you mean live with me? Why should I? I work just like them and I pay my bills. Now we aren't talking and it hurts a little bit. Now we are speaking to one another, and it hurts a little bit. I miss my best friend, but I don't think I'm wrong. Please, April, help me to understand this. What would you do? By the way, I'm 31, no kids, and my cousin Tia is 25 with a son and one on the way. Thanks for the help in advance. Love you much. My real name is blank, and I sent you a picture of myself so you can see a person who loves and follows you. Tell Mumsy I said hello. So, um, Ashley is really pretty. She is so pretty. I wish I had like the perfect lips like that. I swear. I'm just Anyway, but she's really pretty So Ashley's got an issue with her family member that is also her cousin um, her best friend her best friend is her cousin and they already then got an evicted so Did Ashley say she let them all move in with her all motherfucking seven of them it's always nice, like I say, all the fucking time to help out a family member, family member, friend, you know, it's always nice to help out people in general. Okay. Let's just keep that into account. It's, it's, it's what we do as human beings. We are trying to help people because in return, we would want somebody to help us as well, but you don't help somebody because you want to be known as getting, getting a deed done or, you know, you don't help people because you want to get help. You help people because it's done out of the kindness of your heart. I mean, that's why I help people. You know what I'm saying? If, if nobody don't fucking help me back, I don't really give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it's always a good thing to help a motherfucker out and just be neighborly, family, friendly, whatever. But here's the thing. You got to help your motherfucking self too. All right. I'm sorry, but 
whew, seven people moving into your house. That's, is it a motherfucking shelter? I'm all up for helping people. But damn, four months is a long fucking time for seven extra bodies. Seven extra motherfucking bodies to live up in your house. And I say this because, remember, I have five kids, so I know exactly what it's like to have seven people living in a household, all right? Because I used to be that, a household of seven. However, I don't think that I would ever want to go and move in with anybody only because, why did I put on my foundation? I didn't even do my eye makeup, but whatever. Uh, only because... That's a lot of people in somebody's house. That's a lot of water being used. Just a lot of different personalities. A lot of mess. Just a lot of chaos in general. And like I said, we all here to help one another. But here's the issue, Ashley. Why is your best friend stay getting evicted? And did the bitch say she don't want to work? That's probably the reason why she's gotten evicted. Um, because she don't want to fucking work. You might want to think about that. Now, here's the thing. You've helped her, and now she is getting evicted, not for the first time, not for the fucking second time, but I read it three times that you said that she got evicted, and she's mad that you won't allow her to stay with you. Listen, like I said, it's always nice to help out someone because that's what we do as people in general. We help people. That's just what we do. We help motherfuckers. However... I ain't about to keep constantly fucking helping somebody that don't want to help themselves. If you can't help yourself, then how can I fucking help you? And it hurts that you and her may not be speaking to one another. It hurts that she feels like you're not on her side. But this is the thing. You're not allowing your friend to grow up. She's going to have to learn the hard way. You know why? Because as long for some, with some people, as long as you continuously hold their hand and help them and do stuff for them, they're never going to grow up. They're never going to be able to do the shit on their own. And then what's going to happen in the real world when you're not there to help them or there's no one else around to help them. They're going to have to figure the shit out for themselves. She's either going to have to sink or swim. Now, listen, I'm all up for helping people. You guys know this. I have done the same with my son and his girlfriend. They moved here. They had their child. I helped them. They lived with me for like two months, I think it was. You know, they were messy. Their son stayed up to like two, three in the morning, which is my grandson. But he was two at the time. You know what I'm saying? He stayed up to like 2, 3 in the morning running around, making all kind of noise. They argued. They fought. They barely cleaned the dishes. They left my downstairs bathroom, a fucking bloody mess. So when they finally got into their own apartment, I was so happy. Like, when I say happy, a bitch was overly fucking happy, okay? But then a month and a half later, they were getting evicted. Yes, they were getting evicted because... They didn't want to pay the rent because they didn't want to be here no more. They wanted to go back to New York. So who did they need to stay with for six to eight weeks? Me. I'm going to tell you what. As much as I love my kids, when you have a child that has their own family, it's really hard to be able to live with them. It's really hard to be able to live with anybody who has their own family. Now, I don't mind one person coming to stay with me. Maybe even two. You know what I'm saying? But then when you have their whole motherfucking family, it's like, hold the fuck up. Is this a shelter or what? Listen, a bitch ain't here for charity. It's too many different type of personalities. One person agrees, one person doesn't. We all have different ways of doing things. And like I said, I'm all for helping people. But if you cannot help yourself, what the fuck do you expect me to do? You can't keep giving a person a handout if they're not going to take it and reciprocate and help themselves. You know what I'm saying? You're not her child. You're not her parent. You're not her guardian. You're her family member. And Ashley, you have your own self to take care of. You didn't mention any kids. I don't think she has any kids, but it doesn't even matter. I'm sorry. I'm all up for helping motherfuckers. But when you come with such a big ass package, like with seven people, then listen, I can help you one time, but I'm not going to keep motherfucking helping you. My doors are not going to constantly be open for you because here's the thing. When you have your own family, 
especially if it's a family of seven, y'all motherfuckers don't need to be getting fucking evicted, okay? That's a lot of motherfuckers that are getting evicted. And why are you getting evicted, okay? As she already said, the girl don't like to work. I don't want to work. Who the fuck says that? Unless the only people that can say I don't want to work is people that got money and can afford to say I don't want to work. A bitch like me cannot afford to say I don't want to work. You know what I'm saying? Y'all probably think, well, you don't have no job. Yes, bitches. The fuck I do have a job. Okay. I make wigs. I make videos. You know what I'm saying? I'm a hustler. Not a drug dealing hustler, but I'm a hustler. Saying and I make it work for me. However, motherfuckers who just don't want to work and don't want to fucking do anything but sit around and be on fucking Facebook and Instagram looking at pictures and taking selfies and shit and not getting no fucking endorsements and money for the shit, bitch, you got some some shit with you. Okay, you better figure it the fuck out. Listen, Ashley, I'm gonna tell you this. Don't feel bad that you're not speaking to your friend because or your cousin, okay? Because I be saying this shit all the motherfucking time. Family be the ones that will do your ass in in a motherfucking heartbeat. Them bitches will feed you to the motherfucking wolves in a minute and be done with you. When you have someone in your life, be it a best friend, a friend, a family member or whatever, and you've helped them out. And then there's a time period in your life where you can't help them out no more. And they don't want to speak to you because you can't offer your services or you can't help them. Then you know what? Them is not really your friends. Them is not really your family members. Okay. And I'm going to put it to you just like this. If you got a motherfucker in your life that you have helped numerous times, Okay, and then you are not able to help them at another time in their lives when they need you again, and then they feel some type of way, and they don't want to speak to you no more after you have helped them numerous motherfucking times, and now they don't want to speak to you, then let me tell you something. Them is the type of motherfuckers you don't need to be friends with, okay? Because I'll be damned if I got a friend who I have helped and helped. Friend, foe, it don't matter. Friend, relative, family member, whatever. If I have helped you a numerous of times and then there hasn't been a time where I couldn't help you and bitch, you don't want to fucking speak to me, thank you, Jesus. Don't motherfucking speak to me. Because you know why? That just shows me right there, you ain't no real motherfucking friend. You just been using me all this time to do shit for you. And if you don't want to speak to me no more, thank you, Jesus, because then I ain't got to help your punk ass out no motherfucking more. So what you need to tell your friend, Ashley, your best friend, your, your relative is, bitch, won't you get off your high horse and get a motherfucking job application and fucking find you some motherfucking income and get your own place and stop getting fucking evicted. <laughs> I'm just saying, seven people to get evicted more than one time, that's a lot of motherfucking times, and that's a damn shame. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't want to get evicted one time. You know why? Because I don't like fucking moving. I hate motherfucking moving. I hate fucking taking out the groceries out the car and putting them away. I hate that shit because it all feels like you just moving. I just hate fucking moving. I hate motherfucking moving, okay? I hate the shit, and I don't want to, I would never want to get evicted. That's like you just kicking me the fuck out like seriously who wants to get kicked the fuck out like for reals I'm saying I would never want to get kicked the fuck out but some people just don't care if me personally if you get evicted one time that's like going to jail if you got if you if you're in if you got arrested and got put in jail well I don't know you know what? Let me let me rephrase that motherfucker because each person is different. Everybody don't feel the way that I feel. But I'm going to just say this as my perspective. You know what I'm saying? This is how I feel. My opinion. This is me speaking about how I feel as a motherfucker. If you arrest me, which I have been, and you put me in jail, which I have been for two motherfucking weeks, I'm never coming back. Okay. A bitch ain't never coming back to jail, okay? Because I have learned my motherfucking lesson. And I know for the next time around, bitch, you better do shit differently. If you want to do a fucking crime, you better do that shit differently, April, okay? If you want to rob a motherfucker or a bank, bitch, you better do that shit way different the next motherfucking time. So that way your ass don't get fucking caught. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That would be me. Because I got one time, one motherfucking time, okay? And then after that, you ain't bringing me back to jail. That's just like getting evicted. If you kick me the fuck out and put my shit to the curb, bitch, I'm not about to let you do that to me two times. One lesson. 
Because I'm pretty sure your shit is getting put to the curb. I wouldn't want my shit put to the curb, all right? I'm sorry, but I, I'm just not going to allow you to put my motherfucking shit to the curb. So, with that being said, one motherfucking time, okay? You got one time to evict my punk ass, and then I am i didn't learn my lesson. But then you know what? Not everybody is the same like me. Not everybody thinks that way. Some people just don't give a fuck. Some people feel like, you know what? I'm going to just go stay with her because she'll help me out. I'm going to go just stay at Ashley's house because, you know, she always there for me. And that's the problem with motherfuckers. When you always there for a motherfucker and you constantly do shit for a motherfucker, they take that shit for granted and they just feel like, you know what? I'ma just buy these um these J's. I'ma buy this fucking Xbox. I'ma buy this motherfucking car. I'ma buy this goddamn cell phone, this iPhone and shit. And I know if I don't pay my motherfucking rent, well, I could just park my shit at Ashley's house and you know she'll take care of me because she done did that shit already before in the past. So I'm pretty sure this bitch got my motherfucking back again. That's how some motherfuckers think, okay? However, everybody has a life lesson, okay? Everybody got a life motherfucking lesson. Some people just don't give a fuck. That's just like repeat offenders, okay? Motherfuckers that stay going back and forth to jail. I honestly don't know why these motherfuckers keep going back to jail. Drinking and driving, selling motherfucking drugs. It's all the same shit. If you got arrested for the shit once, and then you got arrested for it twice, and then three times, motherfucker, don't you think you should do this shit way different the third time? But here it is. Your punk ass done got arrested five and six times, and you still at it. Don't you think you should just try a different motherfucking approach to shit? Or a new motherfucking profession. I'm just saying. That's how I would feel about the whole shit. But, like I said, some of you motherfuckers don't give a fuck. And your life lesson ain't no motherfucking life lesson. But, it's people like Ashley who finally get tired of opening their motherfucking doors for people. And be like, bitch, you're not coming up in this motherfucker this time. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. Let me tell you something, Ashley. Don't feel bad about your cousin, your BFF, Tia's lifestyle. That's her. She gonna constantly feel like people are out to get her or nobody fucking cares until she care about her damn self. If she evicted, she ain't got nowhere to stay. Well, you know what? Tell her to take her punk ass the social services because they got kids and when you got kids you really need to step up your motherfucking game and worry about how the fuck you live in your goddamn life i'm just saying you know what i'm saying me personally i'm not about to get kicked the fuck out with my goddamn kids in the street you bust me out your motherfucking rabbit ass mind oh wow it looks like a yellow alien on this shit anyway don't feel bad about not speaking to her. She'll get the fuck over it. And if she don't get the fuck over it, then you know what? That's fine. Because you don't need people like that in your life. Those are the motherfuckers that are only here to use you any fuck away. When a motherfucker could get mad with you because you ain't helping them out for the fifth fucking time, bitch, bye. Okay? I done did every fucking thing I can for you. You're going to get mad with me after I have not helped you out. Um, I can't help you out after this fifth time. Man, listen. Goodbye, Felicia. Bye, motherfucking Felicia. Bye. For real. I don't understand people sometimes. They be having shit so fucking screwed up in the world. You ever do your makeup and you constantly... Your, I don't know. Is it me? But... Um... Is it me or I don't know. Every time, not every time, but when I do my makeup sometimes, my nose starts to run. What the fuck is that all about? Okay? Like, seriously. What is that all about? I know y'all like, um, can you please at least tell me what the fuck you're using? There's some cheap ass shit. This shit that I'm using right here is a dollar on Miss Shop Miss A. And it's the best fucking palette I've ever used. This is like a, the um the violet boss of um cheap palettes, okay? <laughs> Serious. But anyway, yes. Stop worrying about what other people 
um, think if they don't want to be your friend or whatever, that's okay. Don't let her speak to you no more. Why the fuck do you care if she speaks to you or not? She gonna either fucking sink or swim, bitch, okay? And she's either gonna have to get it together or not. If she don't want it to get it together and she wants to constantly keep using people or, um, thinking that people are always supposed to help her, then that's what she's gonna keep feeling. But as long as you enable her, Okay, honey, so let's go on to the next one. Hey, April, you can call me Tisha. I was wondering if you ever experienced random females or coworkers giving the stank eye or just overall bad energy. I started my new job and instantly there's a female that doesn't like me and does petty things to get under my skin. She's really mad because I came in on a higher level job position than she is. Or at least that's why I think she's been giving me attitude. What suggestions do you have on how to deal with females like this? How do you deal with petty, jealous females? Thank Tisha. Well, let me tell y'all something. Tisha, you already know, I don't even have time for petty bitches at all, okay? I'm going to say it just like this. I love petty bitches sometimes when I get a petty bitch or I get a female because I get enough of them and I don't even think it has anything to do with me being muffin is my lovers but you guys you girls ever experience like you got your hair done you looking all cute at least you think you looking cute you ain't trying to broadcast the shit to the world like you think you looking all cute but whatever you just feeling good and then you got that bitch like the bitch at the motherfucking mall at the threatening place who kept giving me the side eye you know what a lot of times when I see females do that you know what the fuck I do? I be la I start laughing, like for real. I be like, <laughs> I be looking at them and then I start laughing, like seriously. Or I be like, oh look at that, she like what I got on, <laughs> and just start laughing. Cause bitches don't like shit like that. Like they seriously don't like when you could just take their bullshit and their haterade and turn it into some shit that they really can't stand. Like I'm saying. That's how I feel about females. Whenever I get some haterade or I get that side eye, I never really get too upset about it unless they really side eye me and they don't fucking stop. Then that's when I be like, what the fuck are you looking at? You know what I'm saying? Like, I know some people probably think that that's being rude or whatever, but I'm sorry. What's being rude is a motherfucker staring at you and, and fucking not saying nothing. Sometimes what I do to piss them the fuck off is I'd be like, hello, say hi. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do. But when I see petty bitches who just don't like me or just got some dumb shit to say or whatever, you know what I'm saying? I just laugh at the fuck off, especially when you side eye me because, okay, you want to keep looking, but you don't want to fucking say nothing. That just shows me that you don't have motherfucking balls, bitch. And on top of that, um, obviously you like what the fuck I got on because why are you mad? I didn't do shit to you, but walk through. And if you could get mad with me walking through, then... That has a lot to say about you as a person. So with me, I don't really pay much attention. I think it's cute. Sometimes I really do think it's cute. Like, oh, she like me. Oh, she like what I got on. Oh, that's so cute. She hating. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Even, even if it's at work, you just be like, oh, that's so cute. She hating on me. Like, that's cute. Like, bitches don't like shit like that. And then that might make you petty to say that shit back to them. Or to say anything like that, but that's how I really deal with petty bitches a lot of time. I'd be like, oh, that's so fucking cute. She don't like me. Oh. But since you at work and you in a work environment, you know what you need to do? You just look at her and just be like, smile at her. She'll really fucking hate that. Just smile at the bitch. I'm just saying. And that's like, that brings me to um, what I had to say to you guys. Not all of you guys, but you hating ass bitches that was commenting last week on me at the IHOP restaurant when I was giving my scenario of what I had to go through at the IHOP. First of all, um, there was a couple of y'all bitches, petty bitches, that was like, I wish I would have been the waitress at your restaurant or, you know, talking shit. And like I had to say, bitch, I wish you would have been the motherfucking waitress at my 
my fucking restaurant too because I would have let you have it just as well. I think like what I said to the bitch was I'm not trying to be rude with you. If I sat there for 40 minutes and I didn't get my food and I was sitting there not eating like everybody else was eating and I'm just still sitting there and then I'm saying to her, I'm not trying to be rude to you, but where's my food? Bitch, 40 minutes is a long time to be fucking waiting when you starving and you ain't even counting on me or checking on me. Yeah, the bitch was new, but she was already a waitress somewhere else and she wasn't that motherfucking new. It wasn't her first motherfucking day, okay? It was like her week two or whatever. So she ain't that motherfucking new. Why can't you just check on my food? Why you got me sitting there for 40 minutes? And on top of that, bitches, stop being so petty talking about I'm mean and I'm rude and all of this and I should take my video down. Bitch, what you should do is jump off a fucking high roof and go fucking kill yourself, okay? Don't motherfucking tell me what the fuck I should do. I'm like, this is the shit that I'm talking about. This is my motherfucking channel and everybody's entitled to be fucking upset about something. However, I'm a YouTuber. I'm not your motherfucking role models, okay? Keep that out of the equation. Let's not get it twisted. I'm nobody's motherfucking role model. We all are human beings and we all have every fucking right to fucking vent. And if I've been sitting here for 40 minutes and then you're just looking at me like I got two motherfucking heads and you're not giving me my food, you're not checking on me, you're not saying nothing, you're bringing me burnt food, bitch, please, okay? Like I said, I'm not trying to be rude to you. But here it is today. This is a different motherfucking day. And bitches who said that dumb shit because you watching today, you can leave your fucking comments below if you want to. I'm being rude to you today, bitch. Don't motherfucking comment if you got some dumb shit to motherfucking say. Because I'm tired of you fucking corny ass, trolling ass bitches. They always got some smart shit to say. But then when it comes around, y'all see me in person or whatever. Oh, hey, muffins or whatever. No, bitch. Ain't you the one that says some dumb shit? Like... It's so crazy because I hate when people sometimes want to voice their opinion. Like, your opinion sometimes don't motherfucking matter. Just like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're going to say some dumb shit, do you really think that I give a fuck about how you feel about me as a person? Like, no. No, I really fucking don't. I don't. Seriously. But, yes, um, sweetheart, if you got some petty bitches at your motherfucking job, uh, how I deal with the side eye... I laugh about the side eye because I think it's cute, okay? Bitches stay giving anybody the side eye. Bit that's what bitches do. Bitches do shit like that. <laughs> you give the side eye. A bitch gives a side eye. That's what a bitch do. Those are what you call motherfucking bitches when they give you the side eye. Mm-hmm. Yes. For real. I was trying to save this fucking foundation that was on my hand, but I can't because now I gotta go to the next eye. But, oh, God. Let me tell y'all something. Woosah for this shit right here, because I'm going to be real. I can never do a winged eye. Never. Uh, I mean, I can. I think it depends on the brush that I'm using. Or the brush. Or the brush of the applicator or the liquid eyeliner. I never like to do liquid eyeliner, Okay. I used to love to only do cream eyeliner. But it's funny, like, when you go to one thing and then you really start liking it, then you just stay with it, and then when you go back to the other thing that you really, really did like, it just doesn't work out for you like that anymore. And I don't know. Cream eyeliner just seems to, to dry out so quick. And as much as I love cream eyeliner, it just, just dries the fuck out. And I know you guys hear that text message just going on. So my daughter, Nay, is at her competition in Tucson, Arizona. She has a competition from school for bullying, okay? So she did this great presentation, project and all, and she came in second, her and her group, which was a group of three, her and her two friends. Um, and so they sent them out to Tucson, trip all paid for and everything. Really cool. Make sure you check it out on my vlog video because I did show her getting on her bus at the end. But yeah, so she's texting me. Let me know how her competition is going. So now let's get on to the next real talk. Okay. I think this one is going to be kind of long. I'm not really sure. Okay. Hey, Miss Muffin. My name is... um. I've changed the name. My name is Rhea. I'm 20, 20 years old in college, and I'm getting my bachelor's degree in nursing, so I'm really busy. And lately, in early October, like right around my birthday, I have met this guy named, oh, we're just going to call him that. He is Cuban with blue eyes and really handsome. Before me and O started dating, I was with this guy named Steve, who was also real handsome and has a lot of beautiful hair, black and native. The problem with Steve is we have been back and forth when dating, not because 
because of him cheating, but because of him being very busy. We broken up in late September because I caught him on Facebook trying to hook up with a girl at night. I felt really upset and just called it off. Then October came right around my birthday week and O came along. O gave me a lot of attention when he can. Gave me a lot of compliments and supported me more on my studies for my nursing degree. I even encouraged him to go back to school, which he is now doing. The only problem I have now with O is he has a daughter, which I don't mind, but I know if his mother meets him, I know if my mother meets him, she will and would probably force us to break up. Also, he is 24 years old, even though my mom and dad are five years apart. I want to let my mom know I am dating O, but I know just with those two things will break us up. My friends are telling me to get back with Steve because he doesn't have a kid and, and he makes money, but my heart is not with Steve. It is with O. My mom is really strict on who I can date with my mom is really strict on who I can date that I've never bought a guy. That's why I've never bought a guy home to, to meet her or mention them around her. I hope you can give me some advice. Sorry for the for this being so long. P.S. My father has been physically abusive to my mom and me. And so that's why I'm really scared to be in a relationship and scared to know what real love is. Wow. That really sucks. So, Rhea is 20 years old and she's in college and okay first of all she's grown and she's met someone that she really does like his name is oh he's cuban he has um beautiful blue eyes she said blah 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 but he also has a child and i guess he doesn't make that much money he's four years older than her and then she had the other guy that she was dating who just basically kind of was like a dog because he was on facebook looking for booty calls at night so what's that tell you so her friends her so-called friends Rhea's so-called friends are telling her to get back with steve the facebook guy and i'm calling him a facebook guy only because you know he was on facebook trying to get some pussy from somebody else that's who her friends are telling her to hook up back with because the other guy has a child first of all let's 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 talk about something here just because somebody has a kid doesn't mean that they're a bad person okay a bitch like me got five kids okay if that's the case i would be a horrible person if i had five kids you know what i'm saying and so what you guys are four years apart no big fucking deal who cares? Age is nothing but a number. And four years definitely ain't much of a number. Now, here's the thing. What type of friends you got telling you to get back with old boy Steve because he got money? This is what I be talking about with bitches sometimes. They always worried about somebody else's shit. Okay, so like I was saying, Rhea was messing with Steve. Steve is the one that she caught creeping on Facebook one night trying to get a booty call from whoever, okay? So that's why she ended the relationship with him. Plus, he really didn't have that much time for her. You know what I'm saying? He was always busy, busy, busy. But that nigga wasn't too busy to be on Facebook looking for some free pussy for the night. You know what I'm saying? But he was busy. Now, he got a good job or whatever, and he ain't got no kids. However, she got rid of him because he's a dog. And um, that's what you're supposed to do when you find a dog. You either get rid of him or you put him down. You know what I'm saying? Euthanize they ass, okay? However, she came across, oh, the Cuban guy who, you know, got a kid four years older than her. He ain't making that much money. He, she got him back into school, but she's kind of scared to bring him home because she feels like her mother is going to have something to say because, for one, he's got the kid. For two, he's older than her by four years. So, basically, her mom is real strict about who she dates. Here's the thing. Now, I can totally understand that your mom is real strict about who you date when you're like 16 years old or whatever. But when you're 20 years old and you're grown, your mother really can't tell you who to date, especially when you're grown. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you live at home with her, I don't really think she still can tell you who to date. However, she can probably voice her opinion in general. But to tell you who to motherfucking date, like who to go out with, or, you know, vice versa, that may not work out for her. You know what I'm saying? That your mom may not be able to do because you're grown. However, your friends, 
What type of friends you got that's telling you to go back with the guy that you found creeping on you on Facebook because he got some money? This is the shit that I be talking about with females. They're always worried about somebody else's shit. That's his motherfucking money. Just because he got money, bitches, don't mean that he gonna spend that shit on you. And on top of that, what type of friends you got that's telling you to go back with somebody who fucking tried to cheat on you and tried to play you? <laughs> First of all, what you need to do, Rhea, is get you some new friends. Maybe your mama should evaluate your friends because it seems like the friends that you got ain't worth shit. I wish a motherfucking friend would tell me, bitch, go back with Steve because he had money. Yeah, I know he was trying to get some pussy from somebody else on Facebook, but still he got money. Those be the bitches that ain't got no type of goals in life and ain't about shit and ain't about to be shit in life. They just worried about what the fuck they can get. Just like that friend Ashley had who got seven people living up in her house. She just worried about what everybody else could do for her. That's a damn shame. But y'all bitches need to get it the fuck together. But anyway, let me tell you something. Rhea. Now I understand the part about you worried about what your mama going to think. And on top of that, you got an abusive father who has been abusive to you and your mother. And that's why you're scared to bring home anybody in a relationship you may be with or even mention it. Or you're also scared to date or find out what real love is. Let me tell you something, honey. For one, Real love ain't about physically abusing anybody or mentally abusing anybody. Yeah, couples do have arguments. That's 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 what life is about. People do have disagreements and arguments. But when you could be in a in a relationship with somebody and they physically or mentally abusing you, then you need to evaluate that shit. Okay. Now here's the thing, Steve. That wasn't a good relationship because for one, he didn't have time for you. For two. He was on Facebook trying to find some fucking free booty for the night. You know what I'm saying? If he really gave two fucks about you, he wouldn't have been on Facebook looking for somebody else's booty to get up into. And he don't really help you out with your studies. He don't give you any strength. He don't, you know what I'm saying? He ain't on the home team. He ain't cheering you the fuck on. Then we got O, who is, you know, giving you words of encouragement and et cetera, et cetera. You are giving him words of encouragement in return. And he has taken your words of encouragement and has went and gotten back into school and shit like that. Let me tell you something. That's what I'm talking about. If you can find a man that you can mold and you guys can work and together and you guys can build a foundation together and become one then that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Come to the table with something together. Shit happens in life when you have a kid. You know what I'm saying? So what? People have a kid. I can't stand people who be like, oh, mm -hmm, they got a kid. Oh, oh, I'm not dating them because they got a kid. Oh, do not date her because she has a child. You know, I have been through that already in my lifetime because you guys know I got five motherfucking kids and four of and four baby daddies. Is it four? Let me see. Yes, four baby daddies, okay? A bitch couldn't remember. But I don't give a fuck. And so I'm pretty sure that bitch that's watching this right now is going to be like, oh, shit, this bitch got five kids with four different fathers. Yes, I do, bitch. And what? I'm saying what? What about it? I wish a motherfucker would say some shit to me. I take care of every last one of those motherfuckers. And they have grown up to be good kids and got their own motherfucking family. So that's right. A bitch got five kids with four motherfuckers. So motherfucking what? Who cares? Okay. That just lets you know that I'm not going to stay around for the bullshit. When you start acting the fuck up, then a bitch is ghost. Okay. But here's the thing. You and him are building each other up. He done went back to school because of you. You know what I'm saying? Which in return is going to better his relationship with his daughter. Which in return is going to better his daughter's life. You don't really see it like that, but I'm seeing it that way. You are not only just helping him, but you are also helping his family, his daughter. You know what I'm saying? You are helping them the fuck out. So some people could call it what they want. Now here's the thing. I have dated someone who had like a, a kid. Some people are, are cool to date that have children. Some people aren't. You know, it is what it is. However, don't let anybody else's fucking opinions and thoughts fuck up what you want to do. I don't know if I like this motherfucking brush. 
But your mother's opinion and your dad's opinion, okay, that may count. But your mom, she might not, she may need to evaluate, reevaluate her own fucking relationship with your father. Because if he is physically abusive and mentally abusive to you and your mom, then that plays a big part in your life. Rhea, and you have to realize that men that are abusive to women are nothing but cowards and they're not happy with themselves. I wish a motherfucker would try to come over here to my motherfucking part of the world, meaning this house where I live at, and try to boss me the fuck around. Y'all see what fucking happened to the last relationship, this motherfucker that I had. I got rid of his ass real motherfucking quick, okay? Because the bitch don't motherfucking play. You try me if you want to, nigga. You be out on the motherfucking streets or your bags will be packed and sent the fuck back to where you came from. A bitch don't play, okay? So that's why I tell you guys, mm -mm, I don't put up with a lot of shit. I'm not trying to, and I tell you something, and I tell you what. It ain't cool to always be alone. Yeah, true indeed. April want to be in a relationship, and true indeed, I want to have somebody. I want to feel loved, too. You know what I'm saying? I want to be loved. I want to be told I love you. You look so pretty today, honey. You look cute. Ooh, let me pat you on the booty and shit like that. Who the fuck don't want that shit? A bitch missed that shit, too. But... <laughs> A bitch do not miss fucking aggravation, telling me what the fuck to do when you coming home, when you cooking for me, when you ironing my drawers, can you wash my clothes, can you make me some lunch for work, uh, can I get some pussy, bitch go sit the fuck down, okay? I don't miss none of that shit, so that's why I tell y'all bitches, I'm good, I'm motherfucking good, you live over there? And a bitch like me gonna live way the fuck over here. I'm not about to be bothered. Like Rich Luck says, not bothered, okay? Motherfucking not bothered, okay? However, here's the thing, Rhea. As mothers, because I am one, not just to one person, but to four, five people. Five people and to grandson. Um, we not gonna approve of every fucking body. We just not. And that's unfortunate. As much as we would like to approve of all of our children's soulmates or spouses or whoever the fuck they date in, it don't work out like that in the real world. We don't approve of everybody. You know what I'm saying? And that's just unfortunate. And do you think that my mother approved of every fucking body that I was dating? Hell to the no. And... I'm going to tell y'all what. I wish I would have took her advice on some of the motherfuckers. Maybe I wouldn't have five babies with four different people. But, you know, it's a life lesson. We live and we fucking learn, honey. And then we move the fuck on. You know what I'm saying? You know how we do. But I wouldn't let it stress me out to the point where you break up with the person. Here's the kicker. If you like him and you... and you like his daughter or his son or whatever, if you like him as a person, you know what I'm saying? If you like him, meaning you guys got a lot in common, you like the person he is, he treats you really good, then why are you worried about what everybody else think? You know what I'm saying? Everybody, it don't matter if he's a millionaire. Everybody is going to have an opinion, okay? Everybody got an ass which means everybody got an asshole, okay? Everybody going to have a motherfucking opinion about something. It don't matter. People always going to have some dumb shit or some smart shit to say, regardless if you just fucking ended world hunger, a motherfucker's going to have something negative to say about it. Trust and believe. Motherfuckers always got something to fucking say. It don't matter. And you know something? I enjoy the shit. I tell you that much. I enjoy it. I don't give a fuck if you got something hateful to say about me. Say the shit all day. Fucking bad or good. It's it is you 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 thinking about me. Bottom line is you motherfucking thinking about me. You thinking about what the fuck I'm doing. I'm on your mind in general. But motherfuckers are always gonna have something to say, whether it be good or bad. People are always gonna have something to say. And you gotta worry about what you 
are doing. You got to worry about how you feel. Who's making you happy? You know what I'm saying? We can't always go off of what the next person feels. We can't always go off of, oh my God, my mom is not going to like this person. Or, oh my, my God, my dad is not going to like this person. Or, oh my God, people are going to talk about my shoes and my hair. We cannot keep worrying about what people fucking think all the time. You know what I'm saying? We got to do shit for ourselves. Especially if you got some fucking whack ass friends. Because I'm thinking that your friends is really whack for telling you to go back with the guy that got the money. Them bitches need to be reevaluated. Your friendships need to be reevaluated, honey. Okay? You might want to think about that right there, about your friends. But you do shit to make yourself happy. And if you like O, the Cuban, who's 24, four years older than you, and he treats you good like you've already stated, okay? Like you've already said. And you've got him going back to school and he has not mistreated you. He's building you up and you are building him up. Then you know what? That's all that matters. And you you know something? Of course, your mom may not like him. We don't like everybody that our kids date. But you know what? We grow to like them, especially if we see that there's good in them. Of course, first impressions for parents ain't always the best. You know what I'm saying? With my kids, I don't get the first impressions always that I like the kid or the, the person my son may be dating. Trust and believe, my son that's 18, do you think I liked his girlfriend? No, I didn't like her at first, but I really do like her. She's a great kid. She's nice. She's very respectable, so I like her. But no, I didn't like her at first, but that was the first impression. And here's the thing. I ain't got the data, you do. So why the fuck should I be worried about this shit? You know what I'm saying? If you like it, I motherfucking love it. So here's the thing, Rhea. Bring them around your mom. She's not going to make you end your relationship. You're grown. You're a grown-ass woman. She's going to voice her opinion, of course. That's definitely what she's going to do. She's definitely going to voice her opinion on who you're dating. That's a given. Like I said, it wouldn't matter if he ended world hunger. Your mom is still going to have something to say about it. Oh, but he ended world hunger, but he got a kid. Oh, he ended world hunger, but he's 24. He's four years older than you. She's still going to have something to say. It is what it is. There's no way around that. But as long as you're happy, then bring him around and stop worrying about what your mom thinks. Yes, I mean, when I say stop worrying about what your mom thinks, of course, worry about what she thinks because that is your mom. And as a parent, you have to respect your mom. You know, that is your mom. But sooner or later, she will understand. We always, you know what it is about parents? I'm going to tell you this. We just want the best for our kids. We want them to have better than we do. We want them to be happier than we are. We want them to look better than we do. We want them to dress better than we do. We want them to make more money than we do. We want them to be healthier than we are. We want the best at everything for our kids. And with that being said, each generation just gets better and better and better. And some parents are just hard to please. Some parents are easier to please. Me, I'm, bo I'm both ways because I have five kids. So I have five personalities here. And you know something? I'm going to tell you what. I never compare one kid to the other because, like I said, I have five kids and I have five different personalities. So each kid is going to do their own thing. I don't expect this kid to be a doctor because that kid's a doctor. I don't expect that kid to fucking save the world from world hunger because the other kid did. I don't expect one kid to go into the army because one kid did. I don't expect that. What I expect from my kids is for them to be happy and to be law abiding citizens. However, if they want to run out and rob a motherfucking bank, I'm going to still love you because you're my kid and it's unconditional love. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to still want better for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I want some better commissary for me for you now because your ass in jail. But you get what I'm saying. We always want good for our kids, but I never compare one kid to the other because I have five kids. They each have different personalities. So I can't expect one to be like the other. So I wouldn't worry too much about what your mom is going to think. You know what I'm saying? She's going to think regardless of what she wants to think. She just is. Because she's your mom and she loves you. And that's what we do. We always worry about our kids. You know what I'm saying? That's just what we do. 
Now, I'm trying to put this highlight on and talk to y'all at the same time. I don't know how these bitches be getting their highlight. You know what? They be photoshopping the shit out of their motherfucking pictures. Because I've been trying for the longest. Like, why? how the fuck does Nikki Tutorials always get her highlight perfect? But then I figured it the fuck out. That bitch be fucking photoshopping the shit out of herself. For real. That bitch photoshops the shit out of her pictures. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to stop trying to be like the motherfucking makeup gurus and just do my own thing. I don't really give a fuck if nobody likes my goddamn makeup. This shit ain't for y'all. It's for me to wear. But I'm going to tell y'all what. The shit that I was putting on my face today is real motherfucking cheap except for my foundation. Everything else on my face is from Shop Miss A, bitches. So in case y'all are wondering, like my face, my foundation, I mean my eyeshadow, my contour shit. All of this shit came from Shop Miss A. Yes, this is Shop Miss A right here, bitches. This whole motherfucking palette and these little pieces with a new line and a new motherfucking highlighter okay do you see that shit yes highlight it to the motherfucking gods okay or to whoever fuck that gods shit because i'm highlighted to motherfucking space so on that note i hope y'all motherfuckers enjoyed this fucking video because like i said it wasn't a makeup tutorial it was just a real motherfucking talk and do y'all see these fucking brushes that i've been using okay listen I can't remember the name of the website that sent them to me, but I do know that it was from either AliExpress or Alibaba, one of them, but they are soft and so nice. They call Anamore. Oh, excuse me. Am I wrong? Hold on. I think it's called Rainamore or Anamore. I can't really make it out on the brush handles, but they are so pretty. Like, oh my God, do you guys see this? They are gorgeous. I love the color of them. This is what I'm talking about, honeys. And they're soft. Ooh, child. Yes. I will post the info below for where you can get these brushes from. But yes, girls. Yes. So, that's my real talk for today. I think I... Let me see. Look. I think I am done. Oh, you know what? I got one more. So let's talk about this shit because this is the shit that I really wanted to talk about. Hi. First off, I'd like to say I'm a huge fan of your YouTube channel. I watch every video you upload. You make my day when I get a notification that you uploaded a new video. I wanted to talk to you about my sister. We haven't talked in like five months because of a disagreement. She is pregnant with her second child. She had her first one taken away due to neglect and endangerment. I was there through her first pregnancy and once she gave birth, I took care of that baby like it was my own. Now, when she told me about the news of her second child, I wasn't happy at all, especially with who it was with, a different guy. But same situation, he is a low life that lives with his parents and does hard drugs. When I expressed how I felt, she just came back with nasty responses about how I'm a bad aunt and never was there. Not true. And she brought up my weight and said I just got I, I should just cut myself and die. I used to be a cutter. And she had her own and she had her boyfriend threaten my girlfriend. For no reason, just because she she was bent out of shape that I expressed my concerns. Now, keep in mind, her, her herself does drugs and refuses prenatal care while pregnant. It's like history repeating itself. It's so frustrating watching someone pop out kids that don't care for when you yourself can take can't have kids due to medical reasons. That reminds me, she has had the nerve to say to me, God punished me not being able to have children because I'm not but a cold-hearted bitch and that hurt like hell because I have never done anything mean to her. I've always been there for her through thick and thin and this is how she treats me. I'm just so upset and it keeps bothering me. I'm constantly having dreams about my sister. Like I wish things could go back to being okay. I mean, we were never extremely close, close but we were never gone, but we've never gone this long without talking to each other. I I guess my question to you would be, how do I forgive someone who has said such hateful things to me? How can the relationship be mended? And what should I do about this new baby that's due any time? It's not like I'm going to be there to protect it like the last one. I'm really worried. By the way, my family is crazy and doesn't care at all like I do. My mom is just like my sister, actually. My sister is just sadly following my mom's footsteps. My sister also is keeping my nephew from me, which hurts because, like I said, I took care of him. It hurts. It's such a huge mess. I'm hoping you can give me some ideas on what to do or at least express your thoughts on the situation i feel so sad and alone on this i can't keep letting this bother me i have to move on looking forward to hearing from you thank you so much kayla 
Mm. So Kayla's sister is a drug addict, a pregnant drug addict. And you know what? I'm I'm sorry, Kayla, but you are definitely right about that. I cannot stand to see people keep popping out kids that don't even take care of the motherfucking kids that they have. That's that's what's wrong with the fucking world today. You know what I'm saying? People have all these kids and can't take the care of the kids that they have. They drug addicts, they fucking crackheads or whatever. And then you know what? It'd be people like myself who work hard at what they fucking do or work hard to take care of their kids. And then the one little fucking thing we may do wrong, we get the motherfucking police or some fucking children and family services knocking on our fucking door about, oh, will you hit your kid? Yeah, bitch, I hit that motherfucker because they were stealing. What the fuck? But then you got these crackhead or these drug addict motherfuckers that got no food in their house, don't have no clean clothes on their kid, don't even give a fuck about their kid, and they still got their kids. Let me tell you something, sweetheart, honey, child, baby girl. This is what you should do. Since she already had a kid and you didn't have to take care of it, and then she's being on that grimy, petty shit where she's keeping her nephew from your nephew from her from you, your her child. This is what you need to do. And if ain't nobody else trying to help her but you, and she's still trying to call you all kind of hateful things, let me tell you something. You don't have to fucking forgive and forget. You can forgive because people that are on drugs or are alcoholics, they may say things that they really don't mean. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people say things because they upset or they hurt or they confused or they just don't fucking know no better. And it seems like your sister is all of the above. But this is the way that you can fucking help her. Stop trying to kiss her ass and stop trying to be her friend. But this is what you can do. I'm going to tell you what, okay? Because either she's going to get her baby taken away from her when she gives birth because they do test babies for drug addiction and things like that. But what you can do is pass on a friendly little message to your sister or to her doctor or when she's going into labor because I'm pretty sure you're going to get the news from your mama that your sister has went into labor. What you can do is pass on a friendly message to the hospital that she is being, um, she uses drugs and to test her child. And maybe that way you can get the child yourself. I'm not saying that that's being petty or spiteful, but you know what? I don't think it's fair to children to grow up in a home where they have drug addicted parents that don't care about them. So fucking what you can't have kids. It's a shame that people like yourself can't have kids. And then there are people that can have kids that just don't give a fuck about, um, <laughs> their own children, you know what I'm saying, in general. Let me tell you something. I have met many people who have had children that don't deserve them because they don't take care of them properly, meaning they don't give a fuck about them. They smoking, they drinking, they using all type of drugs. And these poor children are being neglected, okay? Neglected, all right? Fucking neglected. It's a shame, but sometimes you gotta step away from people with problems like that. And I know it may hurt you and I know it may bother you because this is your niece and your nephews that she may be carrying and then they already have one at home. It is what it is. You can tell somebody to you are blue in the face until they're blue in the face. Listen, I care for you. You need to get help. I love you, et cetera, et cetera. You can tell them this until you blue in the face all day long. They're not going to really grasp it until they feel like grasping it. Unfortunately, that's how it is. And if your mother is a drug addict and your sister is following in her footsteps, there's nothing you can do. The only thing that I could really suggest for you to do right about now, Diva, for your sister is to just be there for her when she needs you. Stop trying to come at her. Stop trying to get her to see her wrong. Stop. Because she's not going to. She's not going to see any of that until she falls on really hard times. And if she needs you, then be there for her. And if your nephew needs you, then be there for them. But don't allow it to eat at you and to consume your every fucking thought every day. Some people are never going to learn until they're on their last. Just like with the first person in this very first Real Talk, Ashley's friend. Or Ashley's cousin, Tia. She's never going to learn until hard times. And now, as long as you continue to help a person that doesn't want to help themselves, they're never going to help themselves. You know what I'm saying? They're never going to want to better themselves. As long as you keep enabling them and keep offering them a handout, especially when they're not doing good and they're not trying to win, this, win the situation, they're never going to win-win. They're always going to be slackers. They're always going to need help. And that's unfortunate with some people. But this is the time, honey, where you're going to just have to sit back and allow her to consume all of the shit she's about to consume and just leave it alone. Because as long as you continue to care and as long as you continue to come at her, 
It's not going to make her life any better. She's not going to listen. So you're just going to have to sit back. It's called tough love. It's called motherfucking tough love. And it's unfortunate that you have to give tough love to some people because some people just don't get it. Like some people, you can't just tell them, listen, girl, you need to stop being a crackhead. Some people fucking just don't get it. You can tell them all day, every day. You need to get help. You need to get help. You need to get help. They're not going to get it until they on their last and they really down. So just leave your sister alone because what's going to happen is she's going to go through some shit. She's probably going to go through some shit with children and family services. She's probably going to go through some shit with her boyfriend and her kids or whatever. Just let her. That's when her life is going to be better. That's when she's probably going to get back on her feet. That's probably when she's going to learn like, oh shit, I should have did it different. I should have did it different. I should have did it this way. I should have did it that way. Some people don't listen to other people. They just got to learn on their own. I'm the type of person, I'm not like that. I'm not trying to learn on my own. Because if you're telling me that crack ain't good, bitch, I'm going to believe you. Especially if you sitting in my motherfucking face with no teeth, crack the fuck out, or meth, talking about don't take that drug. Trust me, honey. I'm going to definitely listen to you. So just leave it alone. And just keep her in your prayers, honey. And just let her know, listen, if you ever need anything, I'm here for you. And just leave it at that. Point blank, period. So on that note... I'm going to go. I got some shit that I need to do. I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. And bitch, you know how we do. Make sure you leave your comments below. <laughs>